Fiona, thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, it's a delight to be talking with you. You're a first time presenter at the conference, which is really exciting. Uh, and your topic is using the NLP meta model for motivating your business clients. Um, now, someone who was originally quite scared of the meta model, and I've grown into it and seen its value. Mm -hmm. Do tell us a little bit more about yourself and your presentation. OK, well, first of all, Karen, thank you very much for inviting me to present at the conference. I'm really excited about this. And um, I've been working with NLP for about 30 years, and I specialise in teaching NLP skills for use in business and coaching. Yes. And the meta model, it was interesting you said, said that, took me 10 years to understand the meta model. <laughs> I just, I didn't get it. I, 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 I sort of got it, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah, because the meta model for me was very therapeutic based. Now, I come from a, a career in sales. I worked with Xerox. I worked with Yellow Pages. I've gone through a tremendous amount of sales training where we get taught all about the open questions. Mm. The questions yes. get people talking, you know, the, the, the what, who, etc. And the meta model, that's, that's really what you're, the, the meta model's open questions. But the thing about the meta model, when I finally got it and got really excited about it, is it teaches you how to structure these questions to retrieve the biggest amount of information that's missing, that's been deleted, distorted, and generalized. Yes. Now, if you're in business or you're in coaching, that if you can use this in this way, it's a gift because you get the information you require really really quickly yes yes absolutely and 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 it's it does it cuts through all the all the all the rubbish messaging doesn't it yeah. and bits and pieces that are, that are confusing and causing ambiguity and it was about um 15 years ago i suddenly got oh, hang on a minute you cannot make a picture about anything. Now, I know we can call it visual submodalities, but I just like to call it a mental picture. You cannot make a mental picture about anything until you have the what and the who. Yeah. It's impossible. Yes. You will, well, no, it's not impossible. You will make up your own mental picture. Yes. And you will put your own situation, your own people in there. But the, to, get a, to get a clear picture of a specific situation, you have to be sit, asking questions to find out what specifically are we talking about? Yes. Yes. Who specifically is there? Once you've got that, you've got the start of what I like to call the jigsaw. And then you add the metamodel questions to get other pieces of the jigsaw. Yes to start getting the picture so that you're both on the same page. I mean, we even use it in language. Yeah. Are we on the same page? Yes. Are we seeing the same picture? <laughs> so it, this is a way that really helps people gather information very, very, very quickly. Yes. Yeah. I, I do you know you, you just use that question. It's my favourite question in the meta model. What specifically? Because yeah. so often we will get sort of, you know, the website's not working or I can't, and this sort of thing. It's a what specifically isn't working? Yes. <laughs> I'll just send it to the web developer. The entire website is not working. Yeah. And, and again, in business, um, especially because I do a lot of leadership development training, leaders are dealing with a lot of people in their team, lots of situations, and someone mm. comes up from their inside world and says, this is happening. Assuming the leader knows exactly what they're talking about, it takes a second, a millisecond to say what specifically. Yes. Yeah. And just that, what specifically, just very quickly gives someone clarity. All right, now I know where we're going. Yes, yes. With, or who specifically? Once you've got these two questions to start, then straight away you have saved so much time. The yeah. amount of time that gets lost in business, as you say, something's wrong with the website. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Go it. So it, it just saves people in business so much time. Yes, yes, which, which I love personally. <laughs> I think we all so, do. Yeah. What will delegates take away from your session, Fiona? I've been delivering this. I've been training people on this for many, many years now. They will take away, hopefully, for, um, a fresh look at the meta model. What the the feedback I tend to get is, I didn't realise you could use the meta model in this way. 
I didn't realize a lot of people still think it's a very therapeutic tool mm, mm. and they once we actually show how it can be used just the same structure of the questions can be used for business and coaching yeah. it just gives people a, a, an understanding of ah right okay so you can use it in that way yeah I also as part of this session I link this to part of Robert Dilt's um, neurological levels model oh lovely so we work on values, beliefs, strategy environments. Okay. So very quickly, people can identify where the problem lives. Is it an inside problem or is it an outside problem? Brilliant. And when you're working with that as a, as a, a coach or a, a leader yeah. to solve someone's problem, an outside world problem, as much as people would love to do it, can't, if your car is if your car's broken, you can't meditate and hope it gets fixed. Now, I know some people may be able to do that, but in my world, it's impossible. I've got to yeah. get someone to fix it. So we're looking at environments, and we're looking at strategies. So because for in business, for now, remember this is the way I teach it. I know some people will have different ways of doing that, but strategy. When I hear, I don't know how, straight away I go, that's a strategy. That person has to be taught. Yes. So they need training. Yes. They need to know how to do, learn how to do something or the environment. They may need equ different equipment. They may need to delegate. So you've got that, the outside where you can solve problems, the outside world. If it's an inside world problem, a belief or a value, the only thing you can help someone do is change the way they think about it. Yes. Help them get a different perspective or a different approach. Exactly. So again, just identifying uh, when you're uh, using meta model and asking, right, where's the problem? Is it values, belief, strategy, and environment? Then that just again, it gets really quick to the heart of yeah. uh, it's the opening point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So is there anything delegates can do beforehand to give them a deeper experience of your session? Well, as this is an NLP conference, um, we I, I don't like assuming because we know about <laughs> assuming, but I would imagine that the majority of people have at least covered the meta model. What I would say is go and just refresh yourself on the different stages, because there's the distortions, the deletions and generalization. But there's five language patterns in the distortions. There's four in the deletions and there's three in the generalizations. So maybe familiarize yourself a little bit with the meta model. I'm not covering the whole of the meta model, but I will be showing you the very specific parts that I use to help people really um, think, because that's what the meta model does. It helps yes. people to think um, and, and start to and give them choices. And when you get choices, you expand your map of the world. Yes. When you expand your map of the world, very often you come up with solutions to your problems yourself. It's good that, isn't so it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's magical. It's yeah. when it's done well and done conversationally, it's absolutely magical. So it's it's I would you know suggest if you have time, just revise the steps. Yeah. 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 Lovely. I'll be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this year, um, like last year, the uh, NLP conference is in a virtual environment. Uh, mm -hmm. So how are you planning? I mean, we've had this conversation on um, some of the trainers calls that you've been on. So how are you planning on adding value in a virtual environment? Well, my business has gone on. All my NLP trainings are online because um, I believe we can learn so much more extra online. Right. That we can't quite do face to face. Um, that's not saying I don't do face to face trainings, but we do it more hybrid. Yes. So, but, so a lot of the actual learnings are done face to face. So what will we doing? We'll be doing breakout rooms. Yeah. Because I like to um, demonstrate. I'll be demonstrating some things. We'll be going into breakout rooms. So everyone gets a chance to um, practice what we're, we're covering. And also to just talk to other people, to really get to connect with people that maybe they would never have been able to connect with before. But also as a, as a trainer, when you're looking, there's something magical about working on camera. You can see everyone's face. Yes. And you can see the eye access cues. You could now, you are not seeing the whole body. But just if you're seeing someone from there, there's so much you can pick up on their attention. 
mm. whether they're, 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 they're engaged, whether they're not engaged, whether they're confused, whether they're... And you can very, very quickly adjust. So I find I can quickly adjust what I'm saying because I'm picking up so many clues that I wouldn't see so highlighted in a room. Yeah. I would still see them in a room. Yeah. But there's something about being on camera that just highlights certain signs for me. Yeah. But there's also something magical about working on camera. When you're a presenter and you work to just the camera, if I have to say to uh, no, it's a group of people in the room, I will say to the camera, how are you doing? How are you going to use this? And because I'm saying you as singular, yeah. every single person thinks the presenter's talking to them personally. Yeah. So when it's when you work, when you understand all this about online um, communication, there's actually a closeness that you get that yeah. sometimes it takes you, a closeness you get quickly. Yes. That you don't always get in a, a, a room. It takes time. I get it in a room. Yes. I normally can build up quickly in a room, but there's a certain personal contact that you can get that people go away actually feel right. I I, I understand this, and that was yes. specifically for me. Yes. Yes, it's, it's much, I, thinking about that, it's much easier from a delegate student participant's perspective to make that connection directly with the presenter or the trainer. That makes, yes. that makes so much sense. Yes, people, yeah. people can open up, people um, ask questions, but also there's another thing about breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are private. Yes. Now, if you think of our, if, if we're doing a breakout in a, in, a, in a conference room, you know, a training room, mm -hmm. people are going into breakouts in part of the room and they tend to know that other people are listening to them. Yes, yes. So if you put people into breakout, sometimes I have three or four in a breakout room, sometimes we just have two. If you put two people in a breakout room, nobody's listening to them. Yeah. So it is super confidential and super private. Yes. That allows people to just really connect. So yeah. the, the, it's it's just a different way of training. I don't think one's better than the other. Yeah. I think they both the, the the in person and the online absolutely complement each other. Yes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So um, obviously, as we said, this is the first time you're presenting at the conference. Um, mm -hmm. However, the conference has been around for a little while um, <laughs> and it's lovely to have you joining us. But what does the NLP International Conference mean to you? Just that word international. Um, it's an international community. And I love the fact that it's online because it allows people to who maybe wouldn't have the time or the, the, the facilities to be able to travel. Because if you're traveling to another country for a, a conference, there's a big uh, financial outlay for that. Yeah. So for me, what I'm seeing um, just in general throughout the NLP professional community worldwide, we've got a global community that is growing so fast where people, you know, I've got lots of colleagues in South Africa, in India, in the States. We're really connecting now in a way that we weren't able to do before. Yes. So it's that word international. And what is lovely is um, I've had quite a few people have trained with me recently who've never really done any international training. Okay. And they get amazed that there's they're, they're actually online training with someone maybe in Singapore, Dubai, um, the States, India. And we've all got the same problems. <laughs> That's what's come up. We're all dealing with the same thing because yeah. we're all dealing with human behaviour. Yes, yes. We are all human beings with it, whichever side of the planet we are. There's, there's no... Uh, I, I, I've got a membership club that's international and it's, it's interesting that um, we all come with the same... We use different techniques and people apply them in the same way and they come back with the results saying their clients got these results. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what culture, what country, yeah. what language you're using. Yeah. It's all the same things because we're working with humans. And I think this is why NLP in general is just exploding at the moment all over the world. Yes. Because we've got this fabulous international connection now. Yeah. Fantastic. 
Thank you, Fiona. Uh, it's been, you've given us a real insight into your um, presentation. I'm really looking Thank forward you. to it. So just to remind um, people watching this, Fiona is presenting at the NLP conference on Saturday, the 21st of May. Uh, you're presenting at 15.30, which mm. thankfully will be British summertime by then. Um, <laughs> and we've got whole three hours of delving into the meta model. So um, there's going to be a lovely long time to do a deep dive into um, these new techniques. And my dog's just decided to appear on the screen. <laughs> She's obviously really excited too. So thank you, Fiona, um, for taking the time to be with us today and um, look forward to seeing you in May. Okay, my pleasure. And I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing the being at the May conference. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.